Welcome. Uh, this is our class on using the countertop pressure cooker. Uh, and for those of you that have them and haven't used them or you're debating, uh, hopefully this will give you some information so you'll feel comfortable using them. I am Jill Crossgrove Murillo. I work as one of the dietitians here at the hospital. And I am Tanya Gomez. I also work as one of the dietitians at the hospital in our outpatient department. And I'm also the fitness coordinator for the hospital as well. So we do a lot here, we keep busy. Uh, but what we're gonna talk about is the countertop pressure cooking. Um, you know, I think pressure cooking sounds very scary because we think of our grandma's pressure cookers, the big ones made a lot of noise, lots of pressure. We're worried about getting burns, injuries. You know, somebody's going to lose an eye, something like that. So I think when we hear pressure cooker, we get really nervous and really scared. So with these new countertop pressure cookers, they're a lot quicker, a lot safer, a lot more quiet, a lot easier to use. Um, some of the good nutritional benefits is that it retains the nutrients, it retains the flavor, it retains the color of the foods that you make. So it's really nice, and you'll see that because we're going to make a couple things that the color is just beautiful when it's done. So those are some things that are really nice. The cooking time cut, is cut by 70%. So when you think of a lot of different foods that you would like to eat, but then the thought of cooking them just seems like it would take forever, this is really nice because once you learn how to use one of these, it will become one of your best friends for making meals because that cooking time is so much shorter. You can do it just like that and have a wonderful meal. So those are the nice things about it. Um, kitchen is cooler. So, you know, when you're cooking a lot of different foods, sometimes it gets really warm. The weather's gonna start getting warmer. And if we wanna make big meals, maybe it's Easter, whatever it is, um, our kitchens tend to get really hot. Sometimes people don't like that. And it's just, sometimes the smells aren't real good. And, you know, people just get sick because it's just too warm in there. So your kitchen stays cooler because with the pressure cooker, it retains all the steam, all the moisture, all the heat. So you're not exposing it all like you would if you're cooking in pots and pans and things like that. Um, less cleanup. So, you know, not only is the cooking time shorter, but the cleanup time is less because you're not using a lot of pots and pans. You're using one piece of equipment. So, you know, once you learn, it's like, I don't have to dirty all these dishes because I know in my house, usually what happens if I make the meal, I clean up the meal. When my husband makes the meal, I clean up the meal. So if we're using a lot of pots and pans, sometimes that cleanup is just not real appealing. So sometimes you might have the tendency to just not make those things because it just takes too much time and we're all very busy. And that is one of our biggest excuses for the reasons why we don't do a lot of things that we don't do. Um, food preservation is nice. You can save things for later. You can do a little bit of canning in it. It's not like a regular pressure cooker, um, but you know, you can, you can can things in small portions. So those are a lot of the good benefits. And I think those are pretty big benefits when it comes to this because we all want better quality of food. We all want healthier food. We all want things that taste good and we want it in a short amount of time. And with the countertop pressure cooker, you can get all of that. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is uh, probably one thing that I've had people say, this was made getting the pressure cooker worth it. And that is boiling eggs for hard boiled eggs. Um, it takes a total cooking time of five minutes in the pressure mm -hmm. cooker. And you don't have to think about, you know, how hot should the water be? When do I put the eggs in? When do I turn it off? Um, it's very quick and simple. My nine-year-old can do this. She likes to do it. It's fun to watch her do it. Uh, but the important thing, whenever we're using a pressure cooker, it has to have liquid. So there's a cup of liquid that goes in. And then uh, typically you have a little rack that will sit in there. So the eggs don't actually sit in the water. They sit above it. So they're kind of steamed. And you can put as few or as many eggs in here. So if you want one or two, you can do that. My thing, if you're pumping up the pressure, you might as well do a whole bunch. You can do 18 or 20 of them. And you know, as we're coming into Easter, when we like to color Easter eggs, I thought this, hey, this is a cool time. It's quite a timely topic. So one of the things, if you've done a lot of hard boiling of eggs, you know that new eggs don't usually peel very well. Um, we have our own chickens, so you can see I've got some super fancy colors of eggs here. I like to kind of mix and match my chickens. And I always try to get the newest ones, but again, if you've ever tried to peel them brand new, they kind of stick and you lose half the white and you're like, oh, you know, this is a waste. It's not good. Uh, well, typically when you cook with this, uh, you put them in here, it's a five minute cook time. So there's a little bit of time to pressure up. It's not an exact five minute. Um, as soon as that five minutes is over, we rapid release. We're going to let the pressure go very quickly. We're gonna get those eggs under cold water because we're gonna stop that cooking. So I did cook these this morning um, just because I didn't know if we would have time to run the pressure cooker twice during class. But hopefully what you're gonna see 
is that they peel very easily. Um, last time I tried it with just sort of one hand, it wasn't working as good. Um, and if we have small classes, I like to give each an egg, but it's a bigger class than, not that we couldn't have done it, but we didn't. So you're gonna see that even though it's not completely all going so off together. So you just got that egg this morning from your crushed chicken? Uh, it probably came a couple days ago. Cause no, I actually got it out of the refrigerator. I wasn't that energetic. <laughs> Although that would have been awesome, wouldn't it? If I could have said this was in the chicken this morning, no, no, that would have been awesome. And of course it's being a little bit, uh, I was hoping it would like peel off in like two big chunks. Sometimes it does. Cause I've already taken them and like twisted it and peeled it right off. But you can see here for a fairly fresh egg, there are no little chunks out of it. The other thing is it's gonna be cooked properly in there, I hope, you know, as I'm opening it. You know how sometimes they'll get that green color? I'm um, gonna see a very beautiful yellow color in there because it's cooked appropriately. Hopefully you can sort of see. And I'll leave it up here. You can come look at it later if you'd like to see what that looks like. Uh, so again, it just does a nice job. Maybe it could have used a second more on the yolky part, but again, it, it's still cooked through thorough. So the thing I want to talk about just is kind of what the features are on these uh, pressure cookers. And there's different models. So we have some different features. I'm glad we have kind of two styles so we can show you. My lid comes off completely. Uh, Tanya's lid pops up and it holds, but again, it can be twisted and taken off. Um, the important thing when we look at the top is this uh, seal here that you do want to make sure you're checking this to make sure it's clean, uh, that doesn't have any big chunks because this is what really helps create the pressure. It seals that stuff in there. Now mine has this little holding unit um, and the unit here, it's just held in with a little rack so there's not that extra uh, piece to it. So again, they're just different uh, construction but it's the same thing. We have about the same size. I think they're both six quart pressure cookers. So. Do you wash those seals every time? I wipe them off. I actually hardly ever wash them. I wipe them out. So when I'm done, there's going to be a lot of uh, condensated water here. I'm going to wipe that out. Um, we can pull off this as a cover so we don't get food up. And basically this <clears throat> leads up to our pressure unit. So this thing here is what actually puts the weight on to create the pressure. This is, I think, a 10 pound uh, weight, I believe is what it is. So that's going to make that our temperature goes up to about 125, or 225, my bad. So it's above that 212 that you normally cook at. And we're cooking with everything held in place, so we're not losing steam. It's all held in there. It's pressure. It's cooking hotter, so we can cook shorter, so that we're not killing those vitamins and minerals by long, hot cooking times. It's a quick, hot, get it done, and pull it out. So again, this is more of just a guard for it. Uh, one of the other safety features is this unit here that normally when we're in this position you'll see that this is down and then as the pressure builds up it pushes up and this is a lock so once this thing pops up when the pressure is high enough it's going to secure this lock so that the lid will not come off of the pressure cooker so again this is one of the safety features you're going to see that it has kind of these grippy things here that we're gonna, I don't know what you call them technically, but we'll call them grippy things, that we're gonna put down and we twist on. So we're kind of putting these two locks together. So now I actually carry my pressure cooker like this because I travel with this in my little backpack when I teach classes. And it's really convenient, I really like it. It's better than when I bring my big fancy blender and I gotta carry it around, it's kind of heavy. I used to pick it up and carry it. So once it's on there, uh, and again, once it's pressurized, and you'll hear this when we use it, it's going to pop the lock up and it'll just click. And then at that point, it will not be able to be twisted anymore. So you cannot open this while it's running. It's a very good safety feature. Uh, so I really like that. So kind of what is in here, oops, the pot we cook in, which is still hot from the last time we used it. So I'm going to use this thing to lift it up. <laughs> is this nice nonstick uh, pa uh, pot. And again, then the pressurizing unit is around there. So again, it's a lot quieter, everything's sealed in. And the nice thing with these is unlike using a big pressure cooker, what you do is you put the temperature really high, you let that pressure come up or let the heat come up, you put the little pressure gauge on and it brings it up to five, 10 or 15 pounds of pressure. So again, it increases that temperature. 
With this, oh, and then after that, you turn the temperature down. So once you're up and cooking, you turn the temperature so it doesn't take as much energy. These things do that for you. You just push the button and walk away, and it does it. High heat to start, and it slows it down uh, once you're going. So that's kind of the features. Oh, there is on the back side a little catcher for if there's some excess uh, condensation. You can see there's just a little bit in there from our two things we made. Um, not a whole lot that comes on all the units. It may be in a different position, but they're always going to have that as well. So again, a very safe unit. I feel very comfortable uh, letting my nine-year-old use this. She has fun with it. You can you teach her the basics of what not to do um, and what to do. Uh, but again, I feel really safe with this. So I would encourage you to try it. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and we're gonna make some spaghetti. This is a one pot meal. Tell you a little bit about some of the different, oh yeah, I should probably put this back in. It's a good plan. You know, I would get there eventually. So this just puts in, uh, seals in there again, got my seal, so we're good to go. Uh, most of these uh, pressure cookers have the same features. On mine, I kind of have a three button system. I have to push it whether I want low pressure, high pressure, whether I want to saute, whether I want to, well, it's gonna be ornery, there we go. Whether I want to brown, so if you're cooking meats, a lot of times we brown the sides. Wait, I don't wanna do that, so don't stay there. Uh, we're gonna saute, so I'm gonna just do the bottom, and you can actually cook your meat right in here. Today, I'm only gonna do the onions and garlic, uh, because if you've been in things I've taught before, you know that I believe in quick and fast. So I have little containers of already cooked hamburger that I freeze, and I cooked this one this morning and maybe should have drained it a teeny bit better, but um, so it has a little bit more fat than I would like to see in there because I like to keep things nice and low fat, but uh, I don't cook my hamburger when I do this because I want this ready to go because I can put stuff in and cook super fast. Uh, once we get this in here, we'll have just enough time to set the table and call everybody to wash hands and pretty much supper will be ready. So I'm not gonna use uh, any fat in here. Uh, water will work just as good. So we're gonna saute in a little bit of water and I'm gonna try to be more careful with my measurements. Um, I tend to not be very analytical, so if anyone is, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, you, use the spray, the cooking spray? you could use the cooking spray, um, but I really don't feel that I need it. We don't very, I basically have never sprayed it. Um, it's a good nonstick surface. I've got that little bit of water in there. I think the second recipe does call for spraying something on and we're not going to. There's 50 calories and a teaspoon of fat and why add it if we don't need it? The flavor is still going to be phenomenal because we're going to have the flavor of the food. So I've got some onion. If you wonder what the green things are, it's cilantro. It's not mold or anything. Um, if you're wondering why are there green flecks in her onions? Um, I like to do things like this to have it ready because again I want things to be quick. I don't have lots of time and I'm guessing some of you also or most of you don't have excess time either. Uh, so this is also my one little cheaty thing is I don't cut garlic. I use it from a jar and you got to kind of pick what's good for you. I like to cut onions. I can cut a bunch up. We can freeze them or put them in a container, but garlic, I can do it. I'm just going to choose not to. If so you do cook your hamburger in there, what happens to the grease? Um, you can, what they do suggest is that you take it out and strain. If you would cook meat in here, take it out and strain it. And then there's a process called deglazing where you would take either some water, some broth, or wine. Of course, we're choosing water today. It's the cheapest and the safest at work, so that's what we chose. Um, plus, really, I think it's the best. Like, that's just what I use. I also tend to be kind of economical. These just a tiny bit more. So you can kind of smell that garlic and onion sauteing. Um, we could cook it for quite a while. Oh, yes, but then after you cook like some meat, they encourage that liquid because that will pull off little places where it's kind of glazed on the pot and it's called deglazing, so we're just taking it off. So ideally I would have drained this a teeny bit better, but well, we'll just go with it for today. So the fat ends up in the bottom of the thing? Or? For this it will because there's a little bit of fat that I didn't get completely rinsed off. I probably should have rinsed this better, but I was kind of in a hurry, so I shoved it in a dish. Um, and again, normally I cook huge batches. I did cook this this morning, but normally I have a whole bunch of these, five, 10, sitting around because again, I can come home, I can drop this in here, I can put the spaghetti and the sauce in, and in nine minutes I can have food on the table for people to eat. So we're gonna put that in, know that there's gonna be a teeny bit more fat. Uh, so we're just gonna saute that to kind of warm it up a little bit, but we wouldn't have to. 
because again, I already cooked the meat, I made it faster. So I'm going to turn off the uh, saute and we are going to cook our spaghetti. Now we're using some whole grain spaghetti. They suggest using um, gluten free or whole grain because it's a little more al dente. We're going to do a quarter of the amount of the recipe in front of you. So I'm going to put exactly, not quite probably, I'm going to try to be better, uh, four ounces versus eight ounces, so maybe just a teeny bit more. Um, you can see that this is an angel hair pasta, and what I've found with cooking pastas is sometimes you need a little bit of adjustment. Um, you can use regular white pasta. What I found is you have to cut the cooking time down. You don't need as much cooking time. Um, so we're not going to use a full nine minutes to cook this today. So we got that in there. Uh, we're going to use exactly our half of 25 ounce jar of sauce. Uh, I, I measured it before you, before you came. Yes, yes, I was good, it was good. And again, remember that normally we would cook pasta in water, so we're going to put some water in because we do need to give the pasta something to absorb more than the spaghetti sauce. And I'm going to try to be a little more, it was a little bit soupy last time, so the important thing is to cover the pasta with liquid. So it needs to be in the liquid when we cook. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna put it in here and swirl it around because that's what I would do at home, but I forgot. So we're just gonna go with it because we gotta keep the glass moving. So we're gonna make sure all that pasta is under there just to make sure it's in the water. There we go. And you could put other stuff in here. So if you wanted some mushrooms in here, if you wanted you know, some lentils or something, you could add whatever you like in your pasta. If you like peppers or more onions, uh, you could feel free to do that. So we're gonna put the lid on. Now here's a little trick. Always make sure you're in the position that says pressure and not pressure release. You can cook in the pressure release position, but the steam is gonna come out. It's not gonna pressurize up. So I learned that the hard way once or twice, but you know, it keeps life interesting. So we're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna go to high pressure here. We're gonna put it on, I set it nine minutes. I think we can cook it in seven. Sometimes you play with it just a little bit. Again, I think it would still be okay if we cooked at nine, but because our pasta is really tiny and small, we're just gonna cook at seven. So we're gonna put it a little bit faster. There's gonna be some time for it to heat up a little bit faster than last time because we've used the crock or the pressure cooker. And what you're gonna hear once it gets up to pressure is you're gonna hear this little click and it's when that lock comes into play. Um, and then soon after the countdown will start. <coughs> so do we want to make the next one? Or? Yeah. Like Joe was saying, you know, you, you want to make sure you measure out water. You don't want to use too much because it's a closed system, so there's less evaporation. You know, sometimes people look at it and go, gosh, there's really not a lot of water. Maybe I need a little bit more, but you really don't. So you want to keep that in mind. The other thing too, we're making small batches. So, you know, along with your instruction manual, you're gonna see, you know, you don't wanna overfill these pots because you still have to have that, that pressurization, you still have to have that little bit of steam and you don't wanna fill it too full. So, depending on how big your family size is and things like that, you just wanna keep that in mind and be mindful of that when you're doing some of those things when you're cooking. Um, a couple things, like we're gonna cook a piece of salmon in this. Um, I realize that the papers that we have, I don't think are on the tables, but they're in the back there on that last table. We have a sheet that lists some suggested cooking times for different foods. Uh, and then there's two recipes, the two recipes that we're doing today, the spaghetti and then the salmon with the broccoli and the sweet potatoes. So when you cook meat, like Jill was talking about the searing because she had already cooked her ground beef um, and she was sauteing the onions, you want to make sure that um, you're cutting portions evenly. Ground beef's a little bit different, but if you're just putting a whole hunk in there, you wanna make sure that it's, you know, it's small when you're trying to sear it, but if you're doing like chicken, if you're doing pieces of beef, you wanna make sure that they're uniform sizes so everything will cook thoroughly and cook evenly. Because if you've got big pieces, little pieces, some are gonna cook a little bit more than others and maybe those big pieces won't cook as thoroughly. So you wanna make sure that when you're cutting things, it's as uniform size as possible because that'll just make your life so much easier when you do that. <coughs> Speaking of uniform sizes. They're sort of close. They're not perfect. <clears throat> we did some sweet potatoes. I did feel bad peeling them because we could have just scrubbed them, but it said peel, so I did. I sweet potatoes them. are a little bit different than meat, I think, because they're gonna cook a little bit differently. So but we're gonna put I those right those in the bottom. Um, it says about a quarter cup of water. We're gonna give them about a third, it'll work. 
a little bit more isn't gonna hurt. It's just important to have that liquid in there. Uh, so we're gonna put those evenly across the bottom. And then on our little rack uh, that we're gonna use to cook the salmon, so we're gonna kinda cook in layers today. We're gonna use these oranges, somewhat for flavor, but also because it makes cleanup a lot easier. The fish sticks less to the orange than it does the rack. Oh, it's pretty exciting. Let me do a couple of those. So it's kind of a twofold for flavor and for cleanup. So we got our salmon here. And it says to start with frozen. We kind of found, we cut it in half. So we made it a little bit thinner uh, to put it on. So again, we've just got some fresh frozen salmon, pretty exciting. We're gonna use some garlic and herb seasonings because you want your seasonings on there next. I'm gonna do this over the uh, pressure cooker because I didn't wanna clean up the floor or have to clean too much, so I, you know, it's a good reason. Uh, and then it said you can do a little salt and pepper. And you know, I usually try to keep minimum use of salt. I'm gonna use just a teeny weeny bit because I'm pretty sure I can still keep this meal well under 500 milligrams of sodium. Uh, even with just a teeny bit. I'm gonna put a little pepper on. So these will be our seasonings. Whoops, if I don't open and drop the whole thing. So fresh ground pepper I think has a little bit stronger flavor. And then uh, what we are gonna stack next is we can do a little bowl, but we decided to create a little bowl by using aluminum foil. And we're gonna put this fresh, uh, broken up and washed broccoli right on top. There we go. All right. So we're kind of stack cooking. And interestingly enough, if we wanted to, we could put another layer and we could bake a small cake here. The thing you have to know is that this is a moist cooking system. So if we bake cake and bread, it will bake in here. It's doable. Um, it's just not going to have that uh, crusty edge to it. So it's not going to look as pretty. I should probably get it going just real quick. So we are going to push timer. We are gonna cook this for a three minute, or do you want me to do? Let's do four. All right, we're gonna do four. No way. Yeah, well, it said to do three on the recipe, but we found that we had to put the salmon back in when we tried it, so we're cooking. And again, you kind of learn to play with it. We did make the salmon a little thinner now. What pH means here is not the pH level, but preheat. So we're preheating now. So I thought that was kind of cool. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, is it acidic or basic? But it's preheat. So yeah, we can cook also things like cakes and breads in here. They're just gonna have a little bit different consistency. So, you know, again, if we had, and that one just popped. You saw that it was kind of uh, starting to pressure up and it just popped. And so now we're gonna see the pressure hit fairly soon. So once it pressures up, that's when our countdown will start on the clock. So we have both of them going. And if you didn't hear it, don't worry, because they are very, very quiet. You kind of hardly know they're going. Again, a lot different than when you're pressure cooking on the stove with a big canner or even the stove pressure cooker. So uh, anyways. Did you leave them. the skin on the salmon? Yes, they suggest, well, OK. You are supposed to leave the skin on and leave it skin side down, mm -hmm. but our salmon didn't have any skin today. So mm -hmm. um, normally, yes, we would put skin side down and cook it, but it was without skin, so we did for this particular one. But it so now, like a cake or bread in there, wouldn't it taste like salmon? It may have, it may, but you know the broccoli doesn't, and the sweet potatoes did. The flavor separate. Mm -hmm. And just wait till you see the color, because I don't want to spoil the surprise though. Yeah. Well, and you know, just like when you're cooking in a crock pot and you're making a roast and you cook the meat for a while and then you add your carrots and potatoes later, you can do what's called a stop and go technique. So you would put your meat in, you'd let it cook for that certain amount of minutes, um, that's directed, and then you would add your potatoes and carrots. So you would still have that extra step with the stop and go technique, um, but it's still a lot faster than I mean, a lot faster than using a crock pot. And then, you know, when you're using a crock pot, if you're gone all day and you might not be there to add the potatoes and carrots to it, this is just really nice because those are things that you can do if you're adding other foods to the pressure cooker to cook them all together. And then so. we, have, we have cooked fall off the bone ribs in about 45 minutes, which for ribs is a very short, and again, not. I would say that is not the lowest in fat or healthiest thing. I like to kind of focus on the, the good healthy stuff, but you know, if you're gonna have them, it's a quick way to cook them as well. So. Yes, I, uh, it does suggest not 
sometimes they'll say not to use frozen meat. I took a small chicken, one of my smaller ones that I had raised, and it was frozen, and I was kind of in a hurry, and I might have thrown it in with a bouillon cube and a cup of water, because again, we always gotta have water. It's a moist system. We have to have that water in there. And 20 minutes later, it was fall off the bone. Wow. Yeah, Amazing. I was kind of impressed. I was like, oh. Now again, it was not a huge right. eight pound chicken. It was probably like a four and a half, four pound. It was kind of a small one, but it was really nice because it's cooked with moisture and the pressure pushes in, it does make it kind of that fall off the bone type spread out very. Do you use the bouillon to flavor the bone? Mm -hmm. And because I didn't want to take the time to grind, I just kind of, sometimes when you're in a hurry, you do things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, now again, hopefully we're in countdown here. Yeah. We are. So again, we're about five minutes away. We could be setting the table right now. Again, having the kids come in, wash their hands, getting ready. Again, by the time they get there, or possibly five minutes later, the food will be ready and on the table. We can throw a fruit with it, and really with both sides, we've pretty much got uh, protein, vegetable, grain, and we'll throw a fruit in, we'll be very balanced. It really is a lot quicker. I mean, especially if you're coming home and you're tired, and you decide that you know you want to get a pizza, you want to get fast food. Everybody has to figure out what do you want. Then you got to go get it and get home. I mean, you can make a good meal in the time that it takes for that. So I mean, this is really something that once you know how to use it, it is really good. And they all come with manuals, so become familiar with it. Know what you're doing. Follow those suggested times. Like with mine, it has the rice, it has the meat, it has the poultry, it has the beans. It has those different. Uh, buttons that you can push that will automatically set the timer for that but if you're following a certain recipe like the ones that we have for you guys today you can punch in the numbers it has the searing it has all the different gadgets that you can use it's just they might look a little bit different so I mean generally they all work the same so it's very very simple to use and very quick and what uh, I have on the back of mine that I sometimes tell people about is uh, the, the things that we commonly make, uh, my husband found it wise to sharpie it on the back. How many minutes each of his favorite things take to cook? So I said, oh, okay. And uh, I said, you know, I do use this for, you know, work and presentations, but it's on the back, so you can't see that he prefers rice at seven minutes. That cooks it just about perfect. And uh, typically on your sheet, it'll say potatoes are about eight minutes. Again, we put the cup of water in, we put the rack, and we fill it with potatoes, probably a little bit fuller, because they normally suggest not going over about two thirds to half, or to three quarters full uh, in your pressure cooker, because we don't want everything to bubble up and, and plug those different safety valves up. But we do load it full, we use baked potatoes, we put it on for 20 minutes. And when those potatoes come out, uh, they are better than what's cooked in the microwave, because the microwave kind of dries stuff cooking from the inside out. Um, and they're a little different uh, on the outside. They don't get quite as tough as the dry heat from an oven if you baked them that way. And usually in an oven, it take an hour, an hour, 20 minutes to get that potato done. But the inside is the fluffiest, lightest, awesome texture of potatoes. So we often load up because we can feed a lot of people. Um, and then a lot of times we do like the little meat containers. We might saute some onions and cook up and steam some broccoli and we do sort of topped potatoes. So if the potatoes are going, I can have that meal on the table in about 10 minutes once I walk in the door. Again, because we do kind of the same type of thing, but it's a quick thing. So that just works for him. He wrote some of his favorites on the back, and I've dealt with it. It's all right. I'll survive. And, and mine didn't have a book because my parents bought it as a gift on the, on the shelf unit. So most of my learning has been, I went online and looked at the book and then basically found the information online. And so that's probably why I play with time a little bit, because I don't have an exact, you know, for my unit, cook this long. Uh, that's why I play a little bit. But uh, while we wait for these to finish, oh, yeah, one other thing. Higher altitudes require more cooking time. So if you're dragging your pressure cooker to the mountains for your vacation trip, know that you're gonna need a little bit more time. There's a little less pressure up there, a little less oxygen. So just do pre be prepared for a little longer cooking time. I'm sure everyone will want to, once you get it, take it everywhere you go. <laughs> Maybe not, yeah. but yes? What's the cost of like, the average one of those? Well, 
uh, if you get it as a gift, it's free. Yeah. Um, I mostly what I see them like fifty bucks, depending on if you get sales. Maybe but you fifty can go to a hundred. Yeah, like like some of the standard ones are ninety nine dollars, and you know if you watch for sales deals, you can buy you know higher end ones, and you can get lower end ones. But I mean, I think they're all they're pressuring up it. the same. Yeah. You know, just a few yeah. different features. It's what you're used to. How's the rice work in them? The rice is awesome. Yeah. Uh, I brown white doesn't. Any. Um, they say brown would take a little bit longer, but again, we tend to stick to seven minutes for pretty much all of our rice. Another one of our favorites at our house is we use the yellow saffron rice. We throw a bag of baby carrots in, a little bit of extra water, seven minutes, it's good. We've got our vegetable and our grain at once. So I think we've beeped here for zero. So what we're gonna do now is a rapid release. Uh, both of our units have the rapid release. Ours are a little bit different. Uh, sometimes this scares people a little bit because on mine it's a manual. I'm going to move it from uh, 3 o'clock to 1 o'clock position and you're going to see that it's going to send that steam right up. Again, I'm not going to put my hand or my face in it. It's still steam. It's still hot. Uh, so I'm going to just go to the side. And different recipes require different. Some recipes, when you cook, they want it to slow release naturally. So it'll go in the keep warm phase, and it could sit for a long time. It will maintain it warm like a crock pot would. This particular recipe, they want you to rapid release and stop the cooking. So on this one, we're going to rapid release. On this recipe, yeah. too, it's a rapid release. Yeah, and you can see, like, there's a countdown for four minutes. So mine's so, a little bit different. There's just a button to push. But it's the same concept. So sometimes it's getting used to that this is normal. Now we're depressurizing. Again, I cannot open this because we're still locked. That lock has not dropped down yet. Really and there it just, really yes, yeah. it is just like any steam. I didn't put my hand over it, shove my face in. You could get it, it, it I wouldn't want to burn my, I kind of stay out of the steam. I kind of let it go. You can smell though what we've been cooking. So in our spaghetti here, now that, I don't know if you could hear it because we were talking, but it, it dropped down. So we know that it's safe now to open it. Um, you're going to see the condensation on the top. A lot of times to me when I open the spaghetti, it kind of looks like spaghetti soup. But if you give it just a few minutes, it is going to thicken up. So I am going to try not to make too much of a water mess here. Now with mine, there's this little red dial. I don't know if you guys could see it even back there, but it's up. And then once all that pressure's released, that button drops. So then you know it's safe to open. So I don't know, I'm going to stir this because it just needs a little time to stir together. And this will thicken a little bit too, so it might look a little more soupy than some spaghetti, uh, but it looks better. Last time I kind of got a little happy with the water. Um, it didn't hurt anything, but uh, it was a little, little soupier. So we'll put some out on the plate just to show you. It would have been good to bring the spaghetti uh, fork to pull it out. The spoon is not the most ideal, but um, you can see here that we have a nice pile of spaghetti. So we've got our tomato in there. We've got a little meat, some onion. Again, I would add mushroom because I like that, but not everybody does. So you can see that we have a nice meal here. We do have, if you would like, and I know a lot of you have eaten, but we have some little forks and some little cups here if you want to try a little cheese on it and see what it tastes like. Uh, but again, we've kind of pushed all those flavors together, so we've melded them in there. Uh, it really makes for a good flavor pretty quick. And again, we're almost uh, just a tiny bit late. Uh, but here on this side, I want to definitely look at the color of this you broccoli. You can see the color of the broccoli. It looks really good. So just fresh steam. We haven't lost any nutrients. It's a nice bright green. Oh yeah, this looks good. So we're going to pull out the salmon. Oh, you know what I forgot to Usually you put the oranges on top of the salmon too, but sometimes you're talking, you forget. So we'll pull some of that out. We're going to get the tray out of the way so we can get to the sweet potatoes. There we go. And again, you're seeing nice, really beautiful orange color on those. And again, we added no fat to this. Uh, very, very little salt, mostly just the seasoning. And again, if you'd like to try this, we have the little forks also. Uh, because this is food cooked naturally, no added fat. It's beautiful, good for us, and it was fast. 
and I would have left the peel and the sweet potato, but it said to peel them, so I did. But I like that, that extra fiber. 